Hello and welcome to my official QMK tutorial. In this video, we're doing two things. Number one, we're gonna go over the QMK configurator, the actual browser-based interface for customizing your keyboard. RGB settings, keys, layers, and all sorts of fancy stuff, creating the key map for your QMK keyboard. And then after that, we will go through how to flash your keyboard, i.e. how to push those changes live to your keyboard using the QMK toolbox. One more note, there's some other videos in this series as well. I'll link to them in the description below. One is gonna be on VIA, separate project to use QMK stuff, a lot easier, by the way. And I'll try to do another video with more advanced topics like custom coding macros in the key map and using the command line to flash the keyboard and stuff like that. That'll be in that video. Without further ado, let's get started. QMK. So before we dive into the step-by-step -step instructions, let's go over a very quick glossary. QMK is not code. It's actually written in a programming language uh, just called C. It's a super old code, probably one of the oldest. QMK.FM is where you can find this. It is a project. It's like a company. It's not a bona fide business, etc. but it's kind of like that. It is firmware and a bunch of tools you can use to customize the firmware on your keyboard. And it's made up of a bunch of parts. There's files, there's contributors, there's key maps, there's a configurator, toolbox. Um, it's The code is written in and just a bunch of stuff. Think of it as like an overall project. Now, what is firmware? I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not going to give you the technical definition because I don't really know. I could like Google it really quick, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm instead just going to say it is like software, but actually on your device. I unplug my keyboard right now. There is a PCB inside, there's firmware in the PCB, coded into the PCB, and you can change that firmware. It's kind of like software on your computer, like browser, my browser is a software, this text edit app is a software, except it's on your hardware, firmware, on your keyboard. There's a technical definition, I don't know what it is. So the QMK configurator, what is that? You can actually, well you can actually reach it right here from the QMK homepage. This is a way to customize all the key bindings and stuff like that. It doesn't actually push live to your keyboard, we'll talk about that in a second, it's called flashing your keyboard, but this is just an interface for editing the key map, an interface for editing the key map. That's all the configurator does. I'll get to how to use this in a second. You'll then compile the firmware and the files and stuff like that. You'll download it into a bin or hex file, and then you will flash it to your keyboard separately. You're now done with the configurator. Okay, so the toolbox, what is the QMK toolbox? It is another piece of software that is not browser-based. You actually download it. And there's what it looks like right there. And you can use this tool to flash your keyboard. Okay, so what does flashing mean? What does flashing mean? Again, there's probably a technical definition, which I'm gonna skip and instead give you the Pete definition, which is installing the firmware to your keyboard. That's it. You have to open up your keyboard, uh, like there's a lock on it, and you have to enter bootloader mode, which means you can actually edit that firm load, uh, firmware, upload new firmware, and then you'll flash it. Just install it. Download it to your keyboard. That's the way I like to think of flashing. Again, sorry for the non-technical definitions, but that's, <laughs> you're watching key news, right? You're not watching the experts, you're watching the noobs. Um, all right, so last thing in this, Oh, and there's lots of different ways to flash your keyboard, by the way. Toolbox is just the one by QMK that's pretty simple and easy to use, but you can do it manually. You can do it via the uh, command line interface, the terminal, this guy, right? There's a bunch of different ways. I'll do a separate video on that. Uh, VIA, last thing. VIA is actually a software that uses all this QMK stuff. And quite frankly, it's kind of like cheat mode for QMK. You can see the interface right here where you can customize things, different layers, etc. You can do macros, all sorts of stuff. This is basically the same look as the configurator, how to edit the things. But with VIA, you don't actually have to compile the files, download them, open up the toolbox, and flash your keyboard. It kind of just does it in real time. So obviously it's much easier and much more user friendly. The next video is gonna be about VIA in this series, you can go watch that. All right, now let's get into the step-by-step. -step. So here's the step-by-step -step to use the QMK configurator. Step number one, 
Make sure to find your exact keyboard, and you might also jot down the controller number. You might need it, you might not. So if you go to QMK, you click on all supported keyboards right here, a massive list will come up. I mean massive. And I see you need to do this because, well, just here's an example. There'll mul there will be multiple versions of a lot of keyboards. I am typing right now on the KBD67. If I search this page, which is not the way to do it, there we go, KBD67. Okay, there's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine files. Which one is mine? Well, there's a few different ways to tell. Number one, I, I, I cheat. I already have VIA installed, so I open up VIA, and it shows my model number right here. This is the MK2, the Mark II, RGB version 3. Now, if you don't have that, you're going to have to go to your manufacturer's websites, KBD fans, look for your keyboard, look for the documentation, and try and find that model. Hopefully, you'll come here, and it'll be really obvious. The, you might have like... Rev 1, Rev 2, or you might know that you have the Rev 2 model. You might know that you have the Rev 1 model or whatever. But if you're unclear, you need to go find the documentation. Once you find it, it might take a little bit of searching. There's a few things you could do. If you're doing manual stuff, you can actually click this button right here to download the default firmware. We're going to export our own with the configurator here in a second, but you could download the default firmware just right here. You just click this button. So here's my keyboard. I'm actually going to flash this keyboard for this video because I can't do the KBD67 with the toolbox. It doesn't work. <laughs> so we'll talk about that another time. Uh, this is the Uni. So I'm going to search this page for, I think it's the Uni. Yep, there it is. The Uni. And even here, I have two choices. I happen to know that I am looking for the USB-C version. This is version three of the Uni. I just happen to know that and I looked that up already. But again, you'd have to do your homework. Once you find this, you know what you're looking for because we're about to choose that keyboard here in the dropdown. But it's also worth going into the rules.mk file and looking at your microcontroller ID or the, M the name, the MCU name, whatever that is. Most likely, you won't need to have this later. The toolbox will pull it up for you. But just in case, I think it's always a good idea to like grab that and jot it down somewhere. There's not a million different things it could be. It's only like a list of the most popular microcontrollers probably. So you might want to notice that. Okay. Once you have that, you enter in the details in the configurator. Step two. I'm going to head over here to the configurator. And you can see it's pulling up my current keyboard. I'm going to search for the Uni. And there's actually three listed right here. I'm going to click mine, the USB-C version. It's going to pull up my layout right here. Sometimes you can have different layouts. I've never seen that for any of my keyboards, but I guess you could. I'm going to name this Pete's Custom uh, Key Map. Okay. Now, moving on. You create your key map, not your key cap. And like, auto-corrected here. Key map. Leave it. Create your key map. So, let's do a full tour of this dashboard really quick. Up here, obviously you enter in your details. You can actually load the default firmware for this keyboard by pressing this button. Compile is kind of, is what we're gonna press when we're done. We'll get to that in a few minutes. This is just some notes and it will actually auto-populate once you do things and you compile things. You don't really need to worry about this so much. Um, this button right here and this button right here allows you to import and export a Think of it as this, this key map. What you're looking at right now, you can save as a JSON file and download it for further use. It is not your firmware. It's not what you actually flash to your keyboard. It is just for loading back into the QMK configurator at a later date, if you want to. And if you have one, or if you want to steal somebody else's key bindings and they can give you the JSON file, you can upload right here. So there you go. Um, print key map, mm, we'll talk about that later. Test keyboard, you can also just press this and it can test your keyboard, show you what's going on right here. It will not reflect immediate changes. This is kind of just for testing your keyboard, which I always use. Uh, key test, this one right here, n.key-test.ru. Don't know what that is. doesn't matter. Moving on. Okay, now the important fun part. This right here is the layer list. If you don't know what layers are, it's kind of what happens when you press a modifier key of your choosing, you can actually customize which key you press to access a whole new set of key bindings for your keyboard. And you can have a bunch, which is pretty cool. You could change your keyboard on a whim. You just press a modifier key and it changes the keyboard. This is how you access that. This is your key map, i.e. what's currently on your key map. 
this is all the things you have to choose from. So basically what we're going to do is, you, there's a couple of different ways to do it. I like the drag and drop because that just makes sense to me. You're just going to drag anything from down here. This is all the options you have to choose from up into the actual keyboard. So this is your keyboard. This is your key map. This is everything you have to choose from. So, for example, I'm going to edit my first layer because I don't want to actually change any of this. Let's come over here. If I wanted this to be in, I could drag this in up in there. I'll say I wanted this one to be in. You could also click this and then click in. You can see how it's highlighted in green right there. Click in. There you go. If you want to change the way this looks, this doesn't affect the key bindings at all, but you can choose different keycaps. Go back to this. Right? Just for fun. This is not going to affect your actual key map at all. So that is how you change the key bindings on your key map. And you can also delete layers entirely, clear layer. I can press that and it'll get rid of that. There you go. Now let's dive into, we're not going to like hit every single one of these because there's a ton. Obviously ANSI and ISO, depending on where you're at, your keyboard layouts or whatever, there's the most common stuff. Your shifted symbols, the modifier keys, Every, this is pretty self-explanatory, right? If you want to assign these things to different stuff, you just drag up there and whatever. Same thing with ISO and JIS. Now, Quantum is a bunch of QMK-specific controls, if that makes any sense. And there's a few important ones. We're not going to go over all of these, but I will, I will just hit a few of these. First up, Reset. This, and you, if you actually hover over it, oh, I'm zoomed in. If you hover over it, you look at the bottom of my screen, it says QK underscore boot when I hover over that. And it'll actually tell you what these things do, sort of, just in a couple of words. And it'll also, you'll see the code for it, QK underscore boot. This is the actual uh, identifier for this function that you would use in the code. We're not going to be touching that in this video, but if you're doing like macros and you're programming scroll wheel, rotary knobs or whatever, you'll need to know some of these codes. And it's actually super easy. You can actually click this button right here and it'll show you everything and what everything does. If you'll see that was the key code reference, this is really handy. When you start custom coding things in that uh, C, in that key map, man, you're going to need this. <laughs> but for now, we don't need any of that. So reset. That's the first one I wanted to talk about. What this does is enter bootloader mode, which we're going to do in just a second when we flash our keyboard. It doesn't always work for all keyboards. And most bigger keyboards, not my little uni that I'm looking at right here, but for example, the KBD, it already has a reset button in here. It's somewhere on layer one or layer two. It enters bootloader mode. There are other ways to enter bootloader mode, which we'll get to. That's, that's a big one right here. Now, layers. These, like four right here. I don't, I don't really bother with a bunch of these. M-O. This is a, I can't actually remember what it stands for. It's like momentary. There you go. Momentary layer. This is basically like a function key. You hit this key bind, whatever it is, I'm going to drag it up here, and you will enter a different layer while you're pressing down the key. And you can actually see, you can customize the layer right here. So I just drag that up there. Now I'm going to click the zero, and I'm going to do layer four. That did not work at all. I meant to drag it. Drag. Oh, I just type it. That's right. <laughs> I was like, wait, what's going on? There we go. Four. So now when I hit and hold down this key on my keyboard, I will be accessing layer four, all of these key binds, and I can do whatever I want in here. All right. TG, there we go, toggle layer on and off. That basically means you don't have to hold down the key. You hit it once, and that will toggle, toggle the layer. Excuse me. I'm going to get fancy right here. So what if I am on layer one, and I hit this, and I want to just be on layer two. I don't even have to hold it down. It's just going to activate layer two. When I hit the button again, it will turn it off and it'll go back to layer zero. But the next one, TO, turns it on and does not turn it off again. So if I could I'll just move this one up here and let's do that one as layer two as well. This one I'll hit, it'll turn to layer two and I can use this key for other stuff. It is not going to turn back again. TT, I actually don't ever use. It's kind of like a combination of both of those. You can try that out if you want. Uh, the other, there's like, two or three more things right here. The LT0, layer zero, layer one, layer two. These are pretty cool. These, if you hold down, will access different layers. But if you just tap it, it will be the normal key bind. Does that make sense? So if I drag LT, let's do one. This one right here. If I hold down this, it will access layer one. If I just tap it, it'll be the normal key bind, 
which is not, this says NA, that's because it's not actually assigned right now. You could put down, uh, let's just do S. How about that? There you go. If I tap it, it's going to be S. If I hold it down, it's going to be, it'll access layer one. I actually think that's really cool. And you can assign those for all your layers, essentially. Like all the 15 layers you could do. I think that's pretty cool. You could do that your shift key, your uh, space bar even. That would be pretty cool. You hold down space R and it accesses another layer. That'd be pretty cool. Um, two more. Left shift T and right shift T. There it is, right there. Right shift T. These are kind of the same thing. We, the, only affects the shift keys though. Left shift, when you hold it as if you wanted to type an uppercase letter, hold down shift and you hit T. That would do that. But if you just tap shift, it could be a different function altogether. For example, I'm going to drag it up here. Pretend this is the shift key. Left shift when I hold it. That's normal functionality for a shift key. But let's say I wanted to do a uh, an RGB setting. Let's come over here and do backlighting toggle. I can drag that in there. There you go. So if I just tap my shift key, it toggles the backlight. But if I hold it down, it's my normal shift key, and I can do an uppercase letter, if that makes any sense. And you also have that available for the, the right shift. And some of the control and alt stuff as well, you can get into that. But the shift ones are most popular in the keyboard community. I feel like a lot of people use those. That's all I'm going to go over for there. Keyboard settings. This is where your RGB backlighting settings can come in. So you can toggle it on and off here. You can go through the different modes that your keyboard offers. Saturation and hue, brightness, uh, effect. This is your speed. It goes faster or slower, whatever effect you're using. You can set those for anything as well. And I think that's about it. There's app and media controls as well. Obviously, power, sleep, media player, volume, up, down, multimedia keys, extra function keys, mouse wheel up or down. You can actually bind to a key, which is really interesting. Lots of different stuff you can play around here. I'll leave that to you. All right. So let's say you've made your changes and you're ready to get this thing on your keyboard. <clears throat> you're going to hit compile. And a few things are going to happen. You're going to see a potato. That's number one. And number two, it's going to give you two more buttons over here. You can actually click out of this, by the way. The full source or firmware. The firmware is going to be a bin or hex file. Dot bin dot hex. That is literally the file extension. Those are the files that you'll flash to your computer. We'll do that in a second with the QMK toolbox. Now, if you want to make further changes with custom code, you can hit full source. It will download all of the firmware code. It's, it's a pretty big file. There's lots and lots of stuff there. It does not include the bin or hex file. You will have to, I believe, compile that manually through the command line interface, the CLI, or something like that. I haven't done that in a while. I'm going to do that actually for the third video. We're going to jump in uh, in the third video. Links in the description. You can go check that stuff out. Now, I'm going to wait here. It's not doing anything. Oh, okay. It gave me an error. I, I know this error because I have done this before, <laughs> but this is a good opportunity to say that you're probably going to find errors. This is actually some pretty tricky stuff. That's why I recommend VIA. Again, that's in a separate video below. Go watch the video on VIA. But I know what this area is. It's because I have an apostrophe up here. I think I'm actually going to delete that. Pete's custom key map. And I'm going to hit compile again and really cross my fingers that it will work. <laughs> success. I am going to leave this in the video. I'm not going to edit any of that out just because I feel like it's important. So full source code could download that firmware. I'm actually going to hit download. I'm going to save it just to my desktop or my downloads folder. I'm actually going to call this Pete's map dot hex just so I can see it a little bit easier. All right. I downloaded it. So now it is time to go on over and talk about using the QMK toolbox. So to flash our keyboard, First up, you're going to download and install QMK Toolbox. Absolutely free. Come over here, QMK Toolbox. There's a couple of different ways to do this, and it's actually a little bit confusing. I'm going to go here. It's a really random link, kind of uh, mixed down there, but this is where you can download the zip file, the exe. Obviously, if you're on Windows, if you're on Mac, you'll grab the package and download it. Uh, follow the steps to install. It's really simple and straightforward. There you go. Next up, Windows only. You'll have to install some drivers. It should prompt you for this. I have a Windows machine right here. I could have fired it up, but um, it'll, it'll prompt you. The first time you open QMK Toolbox to install some drivers, no problemo. If it doesn't, you can actually right-click on it and do install drivers. I don't have it in front of me, but you, you'll have to do that. Uh, number three, 
load your file that you downloaded, the bin or the hex file, whatever that was, into QMK Toolbox. So let me come over here, QMK Toolbox. Let's move this right here. We're gonna make it be this local file up here. I'm gonna click open and I'm gonna like drag mine in. Wait, go, oh, it's not working. Pete map hex, there it is. Okay, now we're good. And by the way, you can also search for your individual keyboard if you wanted to flash the default. Like if you ever wanted to like reset your keyboard to the default firmware, you can actually just come in here, find your keyboard, you, like the uni or whatever it is, and then key map default and then hit load. And it'll actually pull up the default firmware. So, but we're not gonna do that. We are going to use this one right here, which we have open. Now, you probably only have, well, no, this one actually has lots of different options. AT Mega 32 U4. You remember when I told you to uh, jot down the keyboard MCU name or ID, if you wanna think about it that way, this is what you need it for. All supported keyboards. I'm actually gonna find the Uni USB C. I'm gonna to go to rules.mk in here, rules.mk, and it's AT Mega 32 U4. That's a standard microcontroller. It's probably like the most popular one, I think, to my knowledge. Make sure that's selected. It is, we're good to go. So next, you will want to put your keyboard into boot loader mode. This is where things get tricky because all keyboards are different slash some of these work for some keyboards and some don't. We have to enter in into bootloader mode. And I'll also promote my text version of this video. I have a blog post that has uh, a lot of handy stuff here. Let's go bootloader mode. Here are, here are some of the big ones to do this. Number one, you can press the reset keybind. I actually talked about that earlier. If you know what that is already, you can also look it up to see if your keyboard has one. You can, I would try these first, these four first. Number one, and this is what I'm actually going to do here with my Uni keyboard, is press the physical reset button. There's actually a hole, I know you can't see that super well. There is a hole right here, right there, and you can barely see it, where I'm literally going to stick a pin, a paper clip, or something like that, and reset it. It is a physical reset switch. Almost all PCBs have these, but obviously, if you have a keyboard, you probably don't have access to it. It's probably on the bottom of the P PCB, but you'd have to take apart your keyboard. Nobody wants to do that, etc. But if you're using something like this or a macro pad, or you have access to your PCB already, by all means, just do that. Might help if I plug my keyboard in there. All right, I plugged in my Uni that I'm gonna flash in a second. Uh, two more things you can try. Hold space and B for a few seconds and see if that puts you into bootloader mode. And by the way, the reason, uh, you'll be able to tell is a little yellow thing will flash up right here. In fact, you know what? Let me just go ahead and do it with this one. I have some prongs here, some tweezers. I'm actually gonna press the physical switch on the thing and you should see, there you go. Device connected and it has my uh, MCU number down here. I'm good, I'm in bootloader mode right now. I'm ready to flash my keyboard. And in fact, you'll see the flash button uh, is, I, I can press it now. I can flash my keyboard right now, it's connected. now. A few things you could try to get into bootloader mode right here. Hold space and B, hold escape, and better yet, I've never had any of those work for me, by the way, unplug your keyboard and then plug it back in holding those things. Hold down escape, hold down the escape key and plug it back in and wait like two seconds and then release the escape key. And try the same thing for shift and B, plug it in, wait a few seconds, release it. And then another one down here that I, again, I've never had a keyboard that uses this. Hold down both shift keys and press pause or both shift keys and press B. There's actually some official documentation. I wanna say I linked with it, maybe not. Uh, there's some official documentation on QMK's website with some different ones, but that, those are the main ones. Like hold down escape, hold down space and B, hold down both shift keys and B, hold down both shift keys and pause if your keyboard has one. And then if those don't work, try unplugging the keyboard, holding those down, plugging it back in. Yes, all this is super annoying, which is partially why I'm using the Uni for this video, because I have access to the physical reset switch. I just pressed it, I'm good. I am in bootloader mode. Once you have that, again, this yellow thing right here, all you have to do is flash your keyboard. I'm gonna hit flash. Attempting to flash, please don't remove action. There's gonna be some more language here. And it should say, something, something success, validating, validating success, and it also disconnected. I'm good. I can now unplug 
my keyboard and use it. Or, you know, not necessarily unplug, but I'm good. I'm no longer in bootloader mode, it disconnected it, my keyboard is flashed. You're done. Now, a few more things. Uh, clear EPROM. <laughs> I actually don't know what this stands for. I know the last is read only memory. This is any changes that you can make from your keyboard. You know how you can press some keys to like change your backlighting? You can turn RB RGB on or off on your keyboard, usually like a function key or something. That is stored in your EPROM, your read-only memory. It's like some short-term memory. You don't have to reflash your keyboard for those changes that you make on your keyboard. They're just kind of like in there. And there's a very small amount of memory on your keyboard. It holds that stuff. You can clear this if you want. It usually gets reloaded when you flash your keyboard. If something's wrong, like don't ever press this, really. Unless something is wrong and you know what you're doing and you're trying to fix something, you could try this. It will be created again um, once you flash your keyboard. All right, to wrap this up, I will point you to the next video in the series, which is going to be on VIA and other tools like this, which are, quite frankly, a lot easier than trying to do bootloader and flashing and all this stuff. It makes it easy. But you're also welcome to go check out the more advanced video as well that's coming soon. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you get things figured out. Feel free to drop mad comments here on YouTube to either troll me or ask questions about QMK and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you for watching. Ciao, QMK.